Welcome to Dodgers Dogs, the second edition. Casey Porter of Dodgers Daily, joined as I will be each and every week by Chase Witwiska. As we bring you the Dodgers Dogs, we have a great show for you this afternoon. We're going to talk about all the possibilities of the Dodgers bringing in new players via free agency, via the trade. So, hey, Chase, thanks so much for joining this weekend and and for the second edition. So, so glad to have you. Excited about today's show. Yes, sir. I am too. Looking forward to it. Okay, let's dive into it. So, we you know that the the hot stove is really hot right now, and and a lot of people for the Dodgers think it's kind of cold, and it has been. The only two signings so far has been Shelby Miller. And then we also know that the Dodgers signed Jason Hayward to a minor league deal just a couple of days ago, which I really like both of those pickups. But, you know, not the biggest of names. So let's go through some of the trade possibilities. First of all, what are the positions of need that you think the Dodgers need to address this offseason? Uh, man, I think with losing Bellinger, out, outfield is going to be a big key. Um, kind of came as a surprise to me, but at the same time, you know, he – I think that uh, I think their new start and a fresh start is going to be good for him, um, you know. And I, I think another position that um, probably needs to be looked at is shortstop. Yep. And I like Gavin Lux. I do. I like Gavin Lux a lot. Um, but I mean, to me, I think he's a second baseman. So uh, I think the shortstop and the outfield are, are two uh, two concerns right now. Yeah, but now when you say outfield, do you think the Dodgers need to address both center field and left field, or are you just good with one, or how would you go there? You know, I, I think you can always explore your options at both, and and you know, see see kind of kind of just what you have. You know, some of the guys that they brought up from the from minor league uh, and and protected them on the forty man. Yeah, uh, some of those guys have a lot of upside too. So those those aren't def- are definitely not out of the question. Yeah, no doubt. Some of the candidates there would be obviously James Altman. Drew Avens is not on the 40-man roster yet, but James Altman is a big name. And then also Michael Bush, who just got protected on the 40-man in, in ahead of the Rule 5 draft. He also has played some left field. Miguel Vargas has played some left field. We know that he is, you know, a big time offensive player. Still, I think his defensive play, his defensive position is still up for grabs. So third base as well. You know, uh, the Dodgers have not re-signed, uh, re-signed Justin Turner. I've been screaming from the mountaintops. Even if you think Miguel Vargas is your everyday third baseman, man, bring back Turner and let him mentor young Miguel at least for a year. I think that would be invaluable. So what are you looking at for third base? Yeah, man, I think that, I think that they should re-sign Justin Turner. I think that, uh, you know, like like you said, he, he's going to bring some experience. Um, mm-hmm. Miguel Vargas has uh, has shown a lot of success in, in, in AAA baseball. Yes, um, but you know, it, it's a totally different game once you get up to one, once you get up to the big leagues. Um, you know, and, and I think you know, worst worst comes to worst, you know, you stick Justin Turner at third, and you have Miguel Vargas in left. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I think that's going to be just as effective, you know, because he's still – he's gaining experience. And while it may not be at third base, um, you know, he's seeing major league pitching at it every, every day. Um, Which is huge. Yeah, exactly. And and like I said, you know, he's, he's shown a lot of success in AAA. Um, but, man, major league pitching is different. So. Yeah. Yeah, and we've both seen him play left field. We're talking about Miguel Vargas and – you know, I mean, all the, all the little things like like reading swings and getting jumps off the ball, you know, that's going to take a little bit of time. But, you know, Miguel Vargas, his dad was in the Olympics twice, 1992, 1996. So, you know, he's been tra- – he knows how to catch a fly ball, right? I mean, if right. he can hit like we think he's going to be able to hit, he doesn't have to be just an all-star, all-world type of defensive player to be very productive in the Dodgers system. So we'll get to that here a little bit a little bit later in this show, but we have a lot to cover. We're going to cover, first of all, the payroll for the Dodgers. We're going to cover the luxury tax, and we're going to cover some of the trade options that make sense, maybe don't make sense for the Dodgers. Are the fans asking for too much and not really realizing the situation the Dodgers are in? We're going to cover a little bit about what would happen if Trevor Bauer got his case overturned would the Dodgers be on the hook for that and what would that do to the organization we're also going to talk about a couple of trades that I know have been thrown around that might fill some of those needs so I wanted to go over the needs that you hit shortstop outfield both center field and left field third base I think everybody would agree those are the hot topics so check this out Chase okay so you talk about the competitive balance tax people call it the luxury tax right because If you go over it, you have to pay a certain penalty. Let me go over this first of all. 
Okay, the the luxury tax for the threshold for 2023 is 233 million dollars. So any club that goes over 233 million dollars is is gone over the luxury tax. Now the Dodgers have gone over two years in a row. Okay, so and we know that the first year you go over is 20 percent. The second year is 30 percent. The third year and every other year after that is 50 percent. Okay, so. You're talking about for whatever your salary is, you're paying a 50% tax on that. I know the pockets are deep with the Dodgers. That's still a lot of money. So if you could figure out a way to reset that, you'd at least go back to that 20%. You wouldn't be paying the 50% every year. Okay, so $233 million. So where are the Dodgers at? The Dodgers right now, their payroll is $189,964,000. 140. So that leaves you roughly $43 million and there's three spots left on the 40 man. And you still don't know anything about Trevor Bauer, which would be a $35 million, you know, addition to your payroll. So if Trevor Bauer, if he gets his case overturned, okay, you're looking at uh, what 8 million left for your last two spots. So, <laughs> you know, there, there's a lot of moving parts there, isn't there? There, there, there are, there definitely are. And, and, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of Trevor Bauer. Um, not a, not a fan of, you know, everything that's gone on off the field. Hey, you made it real clear last week. As long as the guy helps you win, man, we're good, right? <laughs> that, that is, I mean, <laughs> it is professional like baseball, it. right? It's all about so, winning, right? That, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, man, like, I, I think that, you know, I think that if he does come back and, in, in Part of me wonders how effective he will be, you know, right off the bat. Simply how accepted would he be by the clubhouse? Right, right. You know, and, and there's there's a lot that goes into that. Not only um, not only in his performance, but like you said, you know, what what happens behind the, the closed doors? What happens in the locker room? What happens in the you know on the plane? Things like that. You know, there's there's so many factors that go into it. If he does come back, not only the financial aspect, which is a big one, um, you know, but just the camaraderie with guys and things like that you know there's a lot of uh there's a lot of stuff up in the air with it that nobody really knows right exactly. i'm not quite sure that like even if you asked i think if you probably took a if you put a true serum in the 37 guys that are on the roster right now on the 40 man roster and asked them i'm not quite sure that you could really even get an honest answer or a real answer how they would accept trevor bauer at this point would you agree with that i would you know and in it's because they're not in that situation yet. Yeah, they're I mean, not. It, it's easy. It's easy to say um, either yes, yet you know everything. Everything's cool, or you know I'm not sure how I feel about it. It's easy to say. Um, a lot easier to say when when the situation is not happening. Yeah. So, and there's a lot of details that I'm sure none of us are privy to, and and he has not been convicted of anything in court. So, you know, he's been suspended not by the Dodgers. It needs to be real clear. The Dodgers aren't the ones that suspended him Major League Baseball. Did. So, you know, the Dodgers have not had to handle this situation yet. They've been able to kind of hide behind the fact that it hasn't been them uh, handing out the suspensions. It has been Major League Baseball. So they have not had to deal with this situation yet. It'll be interesting when, when when they do. And like I said, if it gets overturned, that would be $35 million, $333,333. $333. Uh, that would be added to your payroll to pay Trevor Bauer. So, okay. So we talked about, let's talk about the positions. Let's start with shortstop. Your shortstops that are available, uh, Dansby Swanson, Carlos Correa, so let's start there, and then I think you could also make a trade maybe for like a Willie Adamas. We'll get into that. It'd be pretty expensive. Dansby Swanson. Okay, here's the deal. Okay, the Dodgers already have Mookie Betts signed till I believe he's 40, okay? And then they also have Freddie Freeman signed till he's almost 38. Now, the only way, in my opinion, that a club like the Dodgers that has deep pockets – can, can go on a streak where they don't have a chance to win a world championship is if like half of their lineup or more are guys that are in their back half of their 30s and they can't get rid of their contracts and they're no longer producing like their contracts are paying them for, to produce. So the Dodgers are trying to stay away from any kind of long-term contract. Boy, we've seen this free agency market. It has been just absolutely just 
slammed with eight, nine, 10, 11 year deal. So would it be smart for the Dodgers to go out and get a guy like Dansby Swanson and make him the third player in your lineup that you're going to pay all the way till the age 40? You know, I think it's, it's hard to say. Um, I mean, you look at, you look at what he's doing right now. And, and, you know, I, I think that if not the best, he's one of the best defensive shortstops in Major League Baseball. Um, I think, I think, yeah, I think you could say he's the best defensive shortstop. And I, and I don't, I don't think it's even close, to be honest yeah. with you. I mean, and he's not good. only is it, is it some of the routine stuff that he does, you know, with the fielding percentage of uh, 986 last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then nine, 978 for his career. That's, yeah. When you're filling the baseball 97% of the time without an error over, your, <laughs> over the entire course of your career. Think about that, man. It's, 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 um, he you know, seems like a Dodger, too, you know, just like a really good dude. He has that perfect culture. You know, he went to Vanderbilt, so he knows Walker Bueller, And, you know, and then he played with Freddie Freeman in Atlanta. So he just seems like a natural fit. If you're going to go ahead and just take that plunge and start paying people till they're 40, he seems like the guy you would do it with, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm, I mean, and, and I think I, I mentioned this last week, you know, him and him and Freddie Freeman go – I mean, go back all the way to Atlanta. And if you yeah. look at um, something as small as, you know, when, when Freddie went back to Atlanta last year, um, there were, there was a video that went viral of, uh, of Dan, I think it was Dansby's son or. Uh, Young son. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if that doesn't show you how close those guys were, you know, not only on the baseball field, but off, um, you know, I, I think that that speaks volumes. And I think that, you know, I, I have a feeling that's going to play a role. So, yeah, and Dansby Swanson is only 28. So, I mean, you know, we're going to get into I, – I, I, I got into some of the numbers, you know, uh, uh, this week. But but there's only like four players in all of Major League Baseball that that between batting average, OPS, and home runs, there's only four of them that are over the age of 31. The Dodgers have one of them and Freddie Freeman. So, it just does not – you know, the numbers would say it does not pay at all. To have guys you get in your lineup that are that are you know, oh thirty three or above, and paying them you know multi year deals, Swanson's twenty eight man. So, I mean, it, let's say that you gave him an eight year deal. I mean, you're talking thirty six. That's that's something I think that the Dodgers you know I, that's something they could finagle. I mean, you're talking about maybe the last couple of years he's not quite exactly what you you know what he was at the beginning of it, but you know twenty eight still pretty young, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think so. And I mean, you like you said, thirty six. You know, I mean, if, if baseball is not not like football, man, guys can play until you know they're almost forty years old. So, I mean, if he, I mean, if if it does work out and he does end up producing, you know, that thirty six, that that's that's not too bad of a number, in my opinion. Yeah, I would agree, and. Dansby Swanson, a great player. He seems like a Dodger, and I'm looking up some information here. Uh, let's go on to our next guy, though. Let's go ahead and talk about Carlos Correa. We talked about him a little bit last week, 28-year-old, youngest shortstop in free agency, 286, slash line 287, 363, 463, 21 home runs last year. And uh, the Twins, Cubs, Giants – Okay, the thing about Correa, he's going to want rumored are about twenty five million a year for eight to ten years. You're you're in that. To me, you're at, to me, you know, he's that gray area. You know, I think if you're looking at guys that are already 30, 31, 32 years old, wanting ten to eleven years, you know, like a Trey Turner situation. Right. Um, I think you know that you're paying a guy till they're they're forty years old. Like Turner's going to get paid. Trey Turner's going to pay. I think that's no gray area. Dodgers aren't going to do that. But I think a guy like like a Correa, you know, you're talking, okay, so let's let's go. Maybe he'll do a seven-year deal. So you're talking 35? You know, yeah. that's pretty gray area for the Dodgers. Right. Um, I mean, just part of me wonders if he will take a seven-year deal. You know, I, I think that what he's looking for is is not only an extensive amount of money, but, a, a, you know, an extensive contract, you know, 10 years plus. Um, I don't know if he'll take less than that. Um and, you know, if he has that leverage and he's able to do it, good for him. Um, I mentioned him last week. I just – I think that Dansby Swanson would be He's going to want eight to ten years. Yeah. So, I mean, I think you're looking at at least 36, maybe 38 at the end of his contract. And I still think 
you know, with as good of a player as he, as he is, I mean, a slash line 287, 363, 463, the amount of experience he has in the playoffs and the World Series, you've seen that aspect of it. I still think that's a lot of gray area. I don't think – what I'm saying is I don't think that's a definite no, right? Right. No, I, I, I don't. Um, like I said, personally, I think that Dansby Swanson may be, may be a better fit. Yeah. Um, I think that it makes <laughs> yeah. a little more sense. <laughs> yeah, but, he would immediately be welcomed by – Every single Dodger fan, you can't definitely can't say that about Carlos Correa. Right, right. So, okay, so we've talked about Swanson Correa. Let's move on now to um, oh, one of the possible. Of course, you know we talked about the the length in years. Check this out, Xander Bogarts. Tell me what you think about this, Chase. Xander Bogarts got eleven years, two hundred eighty million, and he's thirty years old. You're going to be paying him all the way till he's 41. If you're the Dodgers, should you have pursued that? Absolutely not. Absolutely There's not. No That's yeah. so, I mean, we're talking about, you know, the guys like, like in our opinion, the Swansons and Correa's great players, gray area for the Dodgers. You're saying no gray area for Bogarts. I don't think so. I, I, I just, you know, signing the guy until he's 41 is a yeah. risky, risky thing to do because not only yeah. does – They wouldn't you know, do it with Trey Turner. No, I mean, he's going to get older, which means he's going to get slower. Uh, he's going to yeah. become more injury prone. And sure stops at a massively demanding position. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, and, I mean, if you're getting paid, great. But, I mean, who knows if he's going to want to play until he's 41. You know, you're, yeah. you're, I mean, that's, that's a risky, risky game to play. This is water under the bridge. But last year, Corey Seager got 32.5 per 10 years. Yeah. So the Dodgers have done that. You know, as big as a fan I am, as, as well, I am. We Seager, both love Seager, don't we? <laughs> I, did, I just, I, again. Is there I, gray I area to that? I mean, are you? is there any still left in you that felt like maybe there was some gray area for the Dodgers? Or are you out on that one? Maybe just a little bit, but. Uh, just because of how much you like him? Correct. Yeah, yeah. but, I mean, if you compare that one to, to, Bo, uh, to Xander, I, I think that Seager's is a much better option. Yeah. Um, but yeah, although I, he's already been, you know, he's already shown that that his body breaks down already. Yeah. You know, we've yeah. seen the injury hit Corey Seager young in his career. So I mean, right. boy, signing him with the amount of injuries he's already had, signing him for ten years. I think, as much as I love Corey Seager, one of my favorites. You know that very well. I I'm just a huge Corey Seager fan. I I don't think he <laughs> left the the Dodgers with any options. Having said all that, okay, let's move to. Willie Adamas, okay, check this out. The thing that's attractive, but at the same time makes him very difficult to acquire is the fact that he still has a couple of years left of team control. He does not become a free agent until 2025, okay, which he's 27, okay. Uh, and so his slash line last year, 238, 298, 448 OPS, and uh, he had 31 home runs. Excuse me, his OPS was 770. He hit 31 home runs. So you're talking about still a couple of years of team control. You're talking about having him for a couple of years. Having said that, okay, with the Brewers, knowing that you have team control over this guy, you're not just going to give him away. I mean, you know, you, you tend to get a little bit more panicked when a guy's in his last year on contract and you know you only have like three months left with the guy. And if he becomes a free agent, you get nothing for them, right? That's not Willie Adamas. The right. Brewers still have team control over him for a long time. So to get him, you are going to have to give up a long haul. Probably some kind of top 10 prospect is probably going to be a pitcher. Then, in my opinion, you're probably also going to have to give up another top 20 prospect. Is that worth yeah. it for a guy with the slash line I just gave you? Of course, we know he's got the strong arm. Yeah. I'm, I'm... And a lot of home runs. Right. You know, I, I but the think, Dodgers have a lot of guys like that. He he swings and misses a lot too, right? That's exactly what I was going to say. You know, it, yeah. it, it, you look at what you have. Yeah, uh, not only. I mean, you look at your prospects. They they have a lot of good stuff. Yeah. I don't think that it. I don't think that it's it's worth talking about know, Jacob Amaya. Talking about Gavin Lux. Right, right. And then behind him, you have Eddie's Leonard. Guys yeah. like that that are yeah that are I don't think it's worth you know sending two or three of those guys over to the Brewers just to just to acquire one, um, you know who you you may or may not end up losing in twenty twenty five I believe is what you said yeah um, you know because then the ball's in his court you know he can go just about wherever he wants especially if he keeps producing so 
uh, I think that, you know, he, I think he would demand a lot. Uh, yeah. And I think the Brewers would demand a lot. So more, so more than you would, you would be willing to give up if you're the Dodgers. I would say so. I think they're going to come after one of your big four, whether it be Pepio, Grove, uh, Bobby Miller, and or Gavin Stone. I think probably the guy they would come after the hardest would be Gavin Stone. And the reason why I say that, I, I don't think the Dodgers would even consider giving up Bobby Miller. I don't even it's think that not. would be – I mean, yeah. <laughs> you look like you're in total agreement on that, right? <laughs> yes, I did better not get rid of Bobby Miller. You know, but Gavin Stone, shoot, he was the minor league pitcher of the year last year. He actually outproduced all of those guys. It, it's amazing to me still how 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 under the radar, yeah, how much a big of an underdog Gavin Stone still is, but he loves that coming out of Riverside, Arkansas, uh, Riverside High School in the Jonesboro, Arkansas area, then going to UCA. Okay, he's always been an underdog. So, hey, let's keep Gavin Stone an underdog. He loves that role. Okay, so let's put a bow on the shortstop position. We've gone over the Dansby Swanson the possible Willie Adamas trade, and then the possibilities of bringing in Carlos Correa and or the in-house options, Jacob Amaya and or Gavin Lux. You're on the spot, Chase Woodwiska. Okay, you're the Dodgers GM. What do you do next year for shortstop? I'm doing whatever I can to get Dansby Swanson. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm just, I mean, he... No gray area for you, huh? You, you no, I think, that, I think that it makes too much sense to not make it happen. Um, you know, with, with his relationship with Freddie Freeman, um, you have no I you have no problems paying him to say thirty eight years old. I don't. Okay. I don't, I don't think I don't think that he's going to slow down, slow down enough uh, to to necessarily worry about that. I really don't. So, are you viewing him more of a defensive option or more of an offensive option? I, I think I you know I think that. Like I said, he's one of the best major league shortstops mm -hmm. in the game. Um, and he did like again, again we said he, he just feels like a Dodger, right? Because of the Freddie right, Freeman right. connection, but I mean the Vanderbilt connection, yeah, yeah. He hit two seventy seven last year. Yeah. I mean, and and that's and three. I think it was three twenty nine on base percentage. Yeah. Um, so it's not like he's a liability at the plate either. Um, I, I like I said, I think it makes. What do you think is a, what do you think he'll give you offensively? Is say a thirty five year old. Oh. Uh, 260 you said oh you, you think you'll still be rocking like that huh i i think i think that he's i you know see I, i've watched him since he was at vanderbilt yeah and he's been one of my favorites since then yeah um and and then when obviously uh he went to atlanta not a big fan of atlanta but i like to watch him play um kept up with him and things like that um you know he, he's been one of my favorite shortstops i mean from the time that that he was in a vanderbilt uniform so yeah Okay, let's move to the outfield. Uh, well, no, let me put a bow on this. There's no doubt in my mind we're going to differ on this. And, you know, like I said, we both get to see both Oklahoma City and Tulsa play a lot. And I can tell you right now, the first thing I would do is I would put Gavin Lux at shortstop and Michael Bush can play second base. Miguel Vargas can play second base. And uh, I also think that Jacob Amaya could play second base if he had to. I think between Jacob Amaya and Gavin Lux, I think – I think people are way underrating what Gavin Lux actually is as a shortstop. I saw, you know, he grew up playing shortstop. That's where he feels comfortable. His lifetime fielding percentage at the AAA level at shortstop, when he was getting to play that position every day, is 983. That would be top 10 in the Major League Baseball um, last year. And I think when you see, especially with a guy like Gavin Lux, when he feels comfortable with the, the role he's given, that also improves his offense. So, I would give Gavin Lux the first shot at it. I would also uh, give Jacob Amaya plenty of innings at shortstop. I would see how you go there. And then I would wait to see what happens at the trade deadline. Then I think you might be able to pull the trigger on a Willie Adamas, say in July or something like that, and, and see if you can, when you're a little bit closer and, and you've got a little bit more time where, where he's a little bit closer to the free agency market and you might not have to give up quite as much to the Brewers, so that's the that's where I would go with shortstop. Let's move to the outfield. Okay, Brandon Nimmo just resigned with the Mets. Check this out: eight years, one hundred sixty-two. So eight one sixty-two. He's twenty-nine. Yeah, he's gonna get paid till he's thirty-seven. Man, he got back, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he did. And if I was him, I'd sign the contract too. Yeah. So some of the outfielders that I think 
you know, makes sense for the Dodgers. Brian Reynolds just came out and said that he wanted to be traded from the Pirates. But he's kind of in the same issue, the same boat as Willie Adamas in the sense that, of course, he was an all-star. But he still has multiple years of team control left. Okay, so the Pirates are not in any – and they are not obligated to trade him at all. Just because he requested a trade doesn't mean they have to. Okay, so when you're talking about multiple years of team control, the Pirates are in not any hurry to trade him. So, man, what are they going to want back in return for Brian Reynolds? And the Pirates never play nice. They always want way more than – than than for their for their their major league players than other teams usually want to give up for prospects. They just picked up Jose Martinez, by the way, in the Rule Five Draft. Congratulations to that. But okay, so uh, Brian Reynolds, there's a trade option. Okay, and then you've got you have Kevin Kiermeyer who just signed, so it, it, he's off the he's off the market. So Nimmo and Kiermeyer are off the books. But I think Brandon Nimmo probably lets you know that that. Uh, you know, whoever you get is going to want a longer-term contract, and I think if you go get a Brian Reynolds, you're talking about having to give up a whole bunch of prospects because, again, he has team control. So what do you do with the outfield? Uh, man, I think one one guy that comes to mind to me is uh, is Andrew Benintendi. Yes, that's that was the next one I was going to bring up. Holy <laughs> cow, yes. Abs- he makes total sense, and, of course, we're familiar with him. Being Oklahoma State fans, we got to see him a lot at Arkansas. That dude can hit, can he? Yeah, sucker can play, man. And, and, it, and it makes a lot of sense. He, he's 28 years old, so he's not too old. Um, and I, I think he would take maybe a three- to five-year contract. Would you agree with that? I think he, I think he would, too. You know, and, and there was a, another guy that that was uh, – He hit 304 last year, by the way. He did not hit very many home runs, just five home runs. But, but he's kind of that player the Dodgers need. Maybe not the three-outcome guy. He – Higher average, higher on base percentage. His on base percentage was 373. The Dodgers don't need another guy that swings and misses a lot and hits home runs. Maybe they need a left fielder that hits for a higher average and higher on base percentage. That guy would be Ben Yeah. And I, and I, I'm, and they I'm, want a guy on shorter years. I think that's the guy that makes sense. I am totally with you on that. Right. And, and, you know, I, we, we went, we went and talked about this last week a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of, of base hits. I'm a big fan oh, of just man. getting on base, man. It, it, Putting it, pressure on the pitcher and the defense. Right. And, and coming from a pitcher's perspective, it's it's so much easier to pitch out of the windup than it is to stretch. Especially, I mean, you, you don't have to worry about anything. Other, I mean, outside of throwing strikes. Um, with a guy on base, I mean, whether he's fast, slow, whatever, you know, you let a ball get away from you. And that, that's a bag or two. Um you know, and then, then you have to think situational. It changes your pitches. It changes your mindset. It changes everything. Um, so I no think, guys that, you know, guys that just do a job and get on base, move move runners, mm-hmm. um, I, I think that you see better outcomes with those guys than you do guys that, you know, his 63 home runs yeah. or whatever it may be. Um, that That's the kind of baseball that I like. You know, and I, I know that's kind of an unpopular opinion, especially with the way things are going now. Um but man, uh, when I would play, I would I would rather a guy you know have a huge home run hack than a guy that would just freaking pepper me, and you know get a single or a double or or one of those. That, I mean th- those those sting a little bit more than, yeah. the, than the home runs do. Well, and here's the thing. I mean, you know this as well as I do. Uh, solo home runs don't usually win baseball games, correct? No. So no. if you have a guy on first base and it's a two run home run instead of a solo home run. That's a better situation, right? So if you got a guy like Andrew, Andrew Benintendi that's getting on base quite a bit, then you have a better chance of not hitting solo home runs. That's exactly right. I, I mean, like I said, it, the the name of the game is base runners, man, and 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 not very many people see it like that, especially you know guys that or, or people that and fans that that aren't really have been around the game for a long time, and I'm and you know I'm I'm just glad they're watching, you know, because. Uh, <clears throat> I think that unfortunately, base baseball has become you know kind of one of those sports that not a lot of people enjoy watching. Um, but you know, when 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 you're around the game for a long time, you realize you know how big of a deal those base hits are. How big oh, a yeah. deal you know just even a walk is. A walk is huge. Yeah, um, no doubt. Just you know, getting on base. You're right. right. It, it goes from you know maybe a solo home run or a a one-run inning to a two- or three-run inning just because yeah. you have a guy on base. So. Yeah, you know, it's. I don't know the professional level. I've never looked this up, but, but I can tell you at least, you know, at levels that we've coached at, 
Typically speaking, a team will score more run. The winning team will score more runs in one inning than the losing team will score the entire game. You know, so if you get guys on base and then, you know, the, the one run innings usually aren't what do it to win games with. They can, but typically speaking, it's the, the larger innings and, and what those large innings are set up by is a base on balls, is right. a base hit. Guys that just got on base, turn the lineup back over to the guys then that can do damage. I think you need to have a balance. You know, I think you need some three outcome guys. I think you need three, four, maybe five of those guys. But then I think you need some Andrew Benintendi type players, a Drew Abens type player who's already in the Dodgers system. And, you know, the, to kind of go to your point there too, you know, the Dodgers were right around 500 in one run games last year. And then obviously they, they lost to the Padres in the National League Divisional Series. Okay. So I think I'm of the opinion if you want to fix your playoff woes, I think you have to start with figuring out why you're not winning more one run games. Right. And I think exactly. if you figure out all of those issues, I think that will coincide with having better success in the playoffs. Yeah. And I think that, you know, one thing that I, j I just forgot to mention, you know, you know, with those guys that get on base, that puts pressure on the field too, on the infielders, on the outfielders. You know, they're mm -hmm. they're worried about you know keeping them at second or keeping them at third on a single to the outfield or yeah. You know, if it's a ball in the infield, they're trying to turn a double play, and, and a lot of times, you know, that that's a hard to, that's a hard thing to do. Some, somebody's gonna throw a ball away, or you know, you're you're just gonna get one out, or you. I mean, you may guy at second may beat you, and then then you're stuck with a guy on first and second just because you didn't get the first out. Yeah. So I mean, there, there's so much that goes into it that, you know, ba base runners are a huge deal. So. No doubt. No doubt. They, they, and I don't think they even, as many statistics as they keep on so many different aspects, I don't think they keep a statistic on, okay, what is the batting average of hitters who are getting to hit off of a distracted pitcher because of a base runner that's distracting the pitcher? I think that would open some eyes if they did keep that stat. Hey, want to get to one more guy. Of course, that many people think the Dodgers need to add, you know, if not a top line starting pitcher somewhere, you know, because you look at Clayton Kershaw, you figure that you're going to have to cover a couple of his starts. And then Dustin May, you don't exactly know what you're going to get from him coming off the Tommy John. Tony Gonsolin has a history injury. And then you have the four rookies. So a lot of a lot of Dodgers fans think that that the club needs to go out and get, if not a front line starting pitcher, certainly somebody that would that would go into the the starting rotation somewhere. What are your thoughts about Kodai Senga? He seems to fall, in my opinion, into exactly what the Dodgers were looking for. Five for 75. You know, we've talked about the Dodgers. They haven't wanted the long-term contracts. Well, the five years, that seems to be exactly what they were looking for, 15 million. Of course, that puts you close to the luxury tax threshold. But if you're going to fill the rest of your roster with free agents, you're going to go over that. You're just going to have to take the plunge if you think this guy can solidify your starting rotation and help you win a World Series. I think that becomes a no-brainer at that time. But the question is, do you think he's that guy? Of course, you know, he's never stepped mound on a major league mound, 15 million per year. So what are your thoughts on him? Should the Dodgers have went and gotten Kodai Senga? Yeah, they, they don't joke around in Japan, man. That's good no. baseball. And, uh, you know, I think with him being that effective, I, I say, why not? You know, you oh, really? Lose. Okay. So you're good. Yeah, I mean, you think about what you just lost. You lose Andrew Heaney to the Rangers. Um, you know, did I expect him to, to necessarily come back? Not really. Yeah. Who would have but, thought this time last year that we'd be saying, man, how are we going to replace Andrew Heaney, Tyler Anderson, and Chris Martin, right? <laughs> right. No, exactly right. And you look at, I mean, th those guys aren't, you know, all stars, but uh, I mean, they played a role. I mean, they played major roles. And I think that. I think that he would come in and, and, and fill that. I don't know necessarily how effective he's going to be. You Fifteen know, million for a guy who's never stepped foot on a major league mound. Right. I I, I I like I said, I don't know how how effective he's going to be. You know, his first start. Um, but I mean, with the numbers that he put put up in Japan, like I said, they they don't and they the don't projectables. It's, it's good baseball. Um, it, it's not like, you know, just, just a rec league for men. Yeah. Um, right. No, no. <laughs> you know, it's, it's good baseball. Um, so oh, I think no. I'm, that stat line is super, super impressive. And I think it's an intriguing thing to, to look at for sure. Not only the stat line, but another thing that, you know, and this, this goes back even like to small college type players that get seen now, you know, the measurables and the projectables. I mean, a 95 mile hour fastball, the way that they're able to, to, you know, to, to find spin rate and vertical break and horizontal movement and all that, 
You know, a, a 95 mile hour fastball is a 95 mile hour fastball. Horizontal break is horizontal break. You know, a split finger fastball or fork ball that he calls it that, you know, that has all of the me- measurables on the on the track, man. It's all the same. It doesn't matter if you throw it off of a Japanese mount or an American mount, correct? Right. Um, so I think that he kind of fills that void, you know, where uh, where it where it needs to be. Okay, man, we've got about, oh, about three and a half minutes once again. It went way, way too fast. We actually got through all of our talking points. I didn't think we would today, so I wanted to cover all the different options as far as the hot stove goes with the Dodgers. Some great thoughts there from Chase Witwiska. So, hey, final thoughts. You, we've got about three and a half minutes. Uh, I don't have a lot of them outside of they need to go get Dansby Swanson. <laughs> no, no big deal, huh? You want that big Christmas present underneath the tree, huh? <laughs> Dansby Swanson and and I think I think Benintendi is going to be a. Uh, I think he he would fill a, a big uh, fill a big role for the Dodgers. I think he would. I think he'd be a really really good fit. So wow, yeah, Swanson and Benintendi, man, that would make Dodgers fans really happy. I, I love, I do, and you know, I I am a prospects guy and. I love all these prospects, so I'm always going to side with, hey, let's throw the young kids out there first because I have that much faith in them because I've seen them. I know how good they are. I would love the Andrew Benintendi pickup. I think there's gray area. Whichever way the Dodgers front office decide to go, I don't think they're going to get Dansby Swanson. I don't think they're actually going to get a shortstop. I don't think they're going to go there. Uh, But if they did, you know, I think like we talked about, there's gray area there. Whichever way they choose to go, this Dodgers front office has shown a balanced approach. You know, they do bargain basement shop. You know, they've gotten, they've gotten Yinci Almonte. They, Monty, they signed him to a minor league contract. He was awesome. Evan Phillips, Phil Bickford, they signed both off of waivers. So they do bargain basement shop and they do very well with that, but they also do sign the big free agents. They signed Trevor Bauer and then they went and got Max Scherzer and Trey Turner in trades. And then they also got Freddie Freeman last year in free agency. So they have a very balanced attack. So they have proven that every year they're going to put the Dodgers in position to win a World Series. So whichever way they go, I think there's gray area to the shortstop position. I'm going to support whatever decision they make. So I think we're going to end it right there. So, hey, Chase, thanks so much for joining. And we'll see you next week for the third edition, the third installment of Dodgers Dogs. Yes, sir. Let's go. Have a good one.